All right. So this is uh, this is Jeskai Mutate. And one of the things that this deck leverages that's rather interesting is the fact that these three color mutate creatures that we have are really two color cards when you're mutating them. So King Caesar here is just white and red or white and black. And King of the Cosmos here is just blue and red or green and blue. So this is a Jeskai deck that happens to have a couple of Mardu Triumphs to occasionally cast this for its front half. But in large part, we're only playing these cards via, via their mutate cost because those are the colors of mana our deck, our deck makes. One thing, this is a viewer submitted build. We've got four copies of Dream Trawler in the 75, which is a card that I've kind of been underwhelmed with this season. So I'm interested, interested to see how this plays out when it's when it's useful, when it feels unnecessary. So let's go ahead and hop on into some matches here with this and uh, see how it goes. I feel like in the dark, I'm not supposed to keep hands that don't have two drops. Let's see, it's great. I can make a dredge 10 card fair. And this would be put into a graver from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it into its owner's library instead, right? No, Tr Trump is wealthy, wealth both wealthy and white. There are no repercussions for his actions. So baby, baby Gzilla is a free roll here. We'll ditch the extra one here. Put this one over the top. Get a Phoenix Feather, smack him for four. Yeah, Dream Dream Trawler is interesting to mutate on too. That's definitely true. We have a Jagnatha Wellspring over there. I think at this point with these two cost reducers, I'm actually holding on to this to cycle. Are they a fire's deck? If they're a fire's deck, they can't play Cavalier with this, right? They could be like Niv Fires, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it's the other thing too. Like what what happens afterwards is I agree agree with that sentiment. I, have a plan. I mean, okay, right? Sure. There's a there's a dream trawler. Did they just get nothing? They just put that into play and get nothing? All right, sure, we take those. We take, we take those. So we play this, we plus this. At the end of turn, we can sack a feather to pick uh, pick the Phoenix back up. You couldn't just cast Trawler, right? I could have, yeah. Why? Why do you think casting Trawler is better there?
Man, they have a lot of... Uh, they have a lot of things that... Niv-Mizzet doesn't hit in their deck, right? That's lethal, right? So we go bounce your thing... Shore Shark, bounce your thing, get you for eight. They're just playing Niv because he's a 6-6 six, six flyer? Sure. Maybe it's just like a 6-6 six, six flyer you can cast with Jeg. Oh, the turn before. Oh, you're right. There was a Raptor. There was a Raptor underneath, right? Yeah, I could have I could have played a five mana if you're or five mana trawler, you're right. Alright. Um It doesn't really look like they have much that Caesar kills, so we'll cut him. Stroke seems good. Is Aether Gust good? I guess they have a five drop that Aether Gust always hits, huh? They have Jag and it hits fires and it hits their Niv and it hits their Yeah, okay. Never mind. They have a bunch of three mana bush. Trawler seems slow and clunky. What am I, what am I trimming here? Hushbringer stops like exactly, exactly their Niv, but their deck doesn't seem like a very good Niv anyways. A very good Niv deck anyways. I'm going to cut two of those, get on the 10-2 drops. That seems fine. Baby Godzilla do, 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 do. If you if you put pouncing shark on baby Godzilla, is that then a baby shark? Can I, can I get a judge ruling on that? If I put a pouncing shark on a baby Godzilla, is it a baby shark? Yes or no? It's also a pouncing. Is it both a baby shark and a pouncing Godzilla? I got it. Hey, DJC. Thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. It takes the name of the top card. You must be fun at parties. Oh, Teffrey Time Reveler, you are a giant stain. <sighs> so, obviously I gave them a little bit of information, but I got a loot out of it. Speaking of giant stains, Magic, Magic Arena's inability to maintain the artwork of my beautiful baby Godzilla. Look what, look what they did to my boy, chat. Look at, look at how they massacred my boy. He's so ugly now! Look at what they did to him! Look at him! It's, it's not even borderless, chat! It's not even borderless! <laughs> Tefri is such a stain. He even removes sweet artwork. <laughs> hey, King Duck, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome. Hmm. I'm not making this up as I go. Right on schedule. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. 
Are we having fun yet, opponent? Are we having fun? Yes, mutating shark onto shark does bounce two creatures. That is, that is in fact how Magic the Gathering works. You need to change your stream category to Hearthstone. Ouch. Ouch. You put two sharks on top of each other, you get a free baby shark. But do Instant coffee drink. Thank you for the two years of support. SC Giants. Thanks for the 11 months. Welcome back. Yeah, I've heard the feedback from a number of people that the current limited format is very good. Hey, Havoc in RN. Thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. And then I think we just hope that they roll into a creature so we can pounce things so we can shark the shark and send them both back and then kill them. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, we have a double bounce, double bounce in the barrel here. Oh, I should have kept that, right? That would have put my raptor up to four. Yeah, I should have kept that. Oh, they're just escaping. Sure. Sure, this is better then. If I had been paying attention and would have known that this was coming, my play my play makes sense. Alright, jump the shark here. Alley oop. Shark on Raptor was lethal. Um, no. They gained life off of Uro. They were at they're at eleven. I'm sure they have infinite choices here. Not surprised they're in the tank. Our line's been relatively straightforward. Yeah, one of their things was tap though. So, like, one was tapped, so, like, if I had lethal that way, I could have. I'm like, if I would have kept the raptor and sharked, sharked the other raptor, I would have been able to put them to one, but that's still not lethal. Now, no matter how I slice it, I could put them to, like, my, my choices could have put them to one or three, but I think putting them to five and clearing their board is most correct. We'll see if they have a sweeper here that they can cast. If they can fay of wishes, granted for a sweeper, and then sweep. Sure. Sharks are gone. All right, so what are, we, what are we hoping to draw here? We're hoping to, like, hit, like, the, uh... King of the Cosmos is probably our best draw. Perfect life form's not bad. Do I have anything that I can hit with this? Do I have anything I can hit with this that makes that makes this lethal? Another Marauding Raptor? If I draw a dinosaur I can put into play, this will get it up to four. Snapdax is not lethal. This might be wrong. Oh yeah, King of the Cosmos would have been lethal, right? Because it's a six. That's definitely right. And if we didn't hit, it feels bad that we didn't hit, but I think it's right. We had, uh, 
What's it called? Is lethal too? If we had another Raptor. So we had like two Raptors and three Kings in our deck that were lethal there. And like the game's not just guaranteed over from here, but we're a pretty big dog with two blanks in our hand at this point. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's right to try and kill them there. It, he is. He would have been lethal if he was not in my sideboard. But he is. He is. He is in my sideboard. Feels. Feels Magic the Gathering, man. I think I'm happy with how I boarded. I'm going to run it back. I'm going to run it back. I think I'm happy with most of the decisions I made that game, which is all about all you can really do. No, no, he would have attacked for six. Had he had he been in the deck to draw. Well, I was supposed to do this. I think so. We have 14 months, Sparkles. Welcome back. Sounds good, Teddy O. Perfect. You love to see it. supposed to just can trip the Tefri here but we also like didn't see any planeswalker remove a lot of them so uh, I think I'm holding on to this land for now I can I could mutate this for two with baby Godzilla and short shark can loot through this Drawn on tap land here. All right, you know, sometimes you mold a five, and they don't have a fourth land. It's, this, this is where. This is where the magic happens, chat. This is where this is where the magic happens. <laughs> what a stupid game. Good good clean skillful magic. Yep. Oh, I don't have any... Oh, this makes red. No, we're good. We're good. I was like, oh, do I not have red? This makes red. Hey, ZYX. Thanks for the thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. Confirmed the magic is you. The magic shall continue until morale improves. Uh, Stream Decker appears to be working. If it doesn't pop out on the first time, try minimizing it, maximizing it again. There also should be a deck button in the lower right-hand corner. So is this the last deck? No, I'm planning to play five-color Niv after this, too. When do we get up to 2,800 people? 
Welcome, folks. Hope you're enjoying your Friday wherever you're at in the world. Well, I don't know if that was the best draw on our deck, but it was pretty close to it. Pretty, pretty close to it. Fun, fun interaction here. Uh, Hushbringer's text stops Marauding Raptor from killing Hushbringer, which is just phenomenal. You haven't, haven't seen that one before. That's why we're playing. Hushbringer, I think, is a reasonable card in the format right now in general. Hush, little raptor, don't say a word. Do, 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 do. Uh, coverage, uh, that's a good thing to plug, actually. If you're someone that enjoys tournament magic and you're new to the channel, tomorrow is our second uh, monthly Hoaglandia Open. We're going to have 256 competitors taking part in a uh, standard tournament that is double elimination. We'll be starting 11 rounds of coverage here on stream at uh, approximately 9 a.m. Central Time. Um, unlike a lot of arena coverage, everyone that we feature in that tournament will be required to share their screen via, via Discord screen sharing service. So, uh, we'll be able to provide very reasonable coverage. It'll be very similar to like the mythic invitationals that you've seen before where both players' hands will be up on, up on coverage. You'll be able to see everything there. Mm, you know what? I think I should have... I think I should have, uh, I should have played an untapped lane so I could pouncing short shark here. Oh my god, I just clicked through the end of turn because they didn't attack. Who? Well, well, poop. We were going to be in a very good spot, and then I clicked through that. Might, might still be okay. I think, I think we're still going to be okay. I think we're, think we're still going to be okay. I was talking about one mistake, and then I made another mistake while we were talking about that. We might we might actually be able to turn this into a benefit, because we're going to be able to mess up their lands that they turn into creatures here. So I'm, I'm still going to be in a position to kill the Nissa next turn, and I'm going to be able to get rid of both their lands that they have in play. Show show the strength of our deck winning winning while handicapping ourselves a little bit. So again, mutate is not a comes into play effects. It's a when this mutates. So Shore Shark's trigger is not stopped by by Hushbringer. Uh, this costs five to mutate. So if I play. Raptor, this will be reduced to four so I can still do it. Let's make sure my auto-ordered triggered abilities is off here so I can stack these how I want. We'll put this on here. We'll put it underneath because it still gains double strike. So this will gain 8, right? Because it deals 4 but has lifelink. So it deals 4, gains 4, and then the deal 4 also gains 4 because of the lifelink, I believe. Yeah, so we go up to 22. And then this has 4 power with double strike, so we get to kill Nissa here. And then remember, with the C dash octopus that they know about, when each of these mutate onto here, we'll get to deal 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker, and we'll get to bounce something.
And when this double strikes next turn, it's going to get to, um, when this double strikes, it'll draw four cards. So we have to like double C Dasher. Yeah. So I misclicked and time walked myself there and we still just ran them over. You want to put these on Adanto Vanguards and Historic? Yeah, that sounds sick. Adanto Vanguards. God, that sounds insane. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. That's probably better than Hushbringer. Finding, finding like the third, the third good two drop is, feels tough. And that, uh, that sounds really good in that format. Disdainful Stroke sounds good here. Aether Gust sounds good against the Nissa deck. Uh, this notably, maybe I don't want all three of these because it notably does not tag Yorian. Tefri, they have a lot of come into play effects. So I don't know that Tefri is particularly good. King Caesar seems good against their Nissa lands. Uh, Hushbringer, turning off Yorian's enters play seems very good. So I just like drag my curve down again and cut the Dream Trawlers. I feel like this is another matchup where I need to like get under them, right? So Dream Trawler seems less than ideal. Would I rather have the second Aether Gust or the third King Caesar? Probably, probably the second Gust in terms of dragging the curve down. Let's try it. Let's try this. Garuda Cannon in Legacy was funny again this morning. The more the more I play that deck, believe it or not, though, the less the less busted it seems. This hand's great. Buy it stuff. Hey, Pepperidge Farm Forever. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. If we don't draw another untapped land here, I'm going to lead on Fabled Passage. That way we have untapped land on two and untapped land on three. Probably fetch a second white source here. Because while this looks like it's red red, the fact that it's mutate is just single red means we don't really need double red. And we need double white for King Caesar in this deck. Lead on baby Godzilla here. The Glass Cannon deck's bad. The Force of Will format, who could have guessed, right? Definitely not the people that were crying about it needing to be banned. Those those people were incapable of guessing that. And, like, Tefri's, like, not even that annoying here because Raptor accelerates the turn you play it. So, like, this turn, I get to go... I get to go land, Raptor, Baby Godzilla, go. That's good, real clean here. Man, they're about to play a flipping shatter, aren't they? I can't play cards, bud. You have a Tefri out. Card is so obnoxious. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to destroy it just to loot through it. Probably dead here at this point. I think, I think we're beating the Tefri on the draw. I don't think we're beating Tefri into Shatter. Not having the second red ending up relevant here now. I'd be pretty surprised if they reprinted Tefri in the core set. I think that'd be a pretty big miss on their part. But I'm also I'm also kind of surprised they've left it legal this long, so maybe all bets are off. Like, what? What's a one drop? A Boreal Grazer, got it.
They're probably just bad for you, Flaming Swag. The Gyruda matchup shouldn't be too bad. You should be able to have counter spells out of the sideboard for that, or Graveyard Hate, potentially. If you're into that sort of thing. I would, I would expect the Fires matchup is just bad, though. They shatter first, you have a 4-4, four, four, and draw a card. That card seems good against board wipe. Sure, it is. I agree. I think I agree with your assessment that I messed up by not playing it pre-combat. Also, like, you could argue my opponent punted by, like, not, not doing it on their turn either, though. So there's that. It's good. It's good against board wipes if your opponent lets it be good. I think I'm declining here. I think I'm just, like, attacking for four. I don't really want to give them an extra ramp. Well, they haven't hit their turn three yet. This is their turn three. So they haven't they haven't had their turn three yet. So it's hard it's hard to turn three Tefri when they haven't had turn three. Yeah, t standard definitely lacks card pool diversity to get away from Tefri. Like there's a there's a lot of Tefri decks in this format. There's, there's a lot of archetype diversity too, but there's definitely, like, a lot of the decks that feel good are playing Tefri. That's definitely the case. And, like, Tefri's present in Historic, but he's not nearly as omnipresent as he is in the current standard environment. I just do this and pass. Maybe I'm supposed to play this out. I don't know. I kind of feel like this is a game where I'm going to be cycling this. We can end step C dash or octopus and then we can mutate King Caesar onto it. Yeah, Field of the Dead and Historic definitely serves as a means to check Tefri. All right, let's not click through their end of turn this time so Caesar can kill Nissa. I don't think we're far enough ahead that we can make that mistake again. If Historic was as played as standard, yeah, yeah, no, I think. I think that his I think the presence of cards like Field of the Dead in Historic makes it makes cards like Tefri worse. This this idea that formats are bad because they're competitive is nonsense. It's re I really hate that that's something that gets pushed by people. I think it could not be further from the truth. Formats are bad when they're poorly designed or have poor play patterns present that don't get removed. It was a good turn. You're not wrong. It was a good good sequence. And next turn, we get to put a second Sea Dasher on here and then draw four cards. So, going to be another good turn here coming up. Hell you. Kill your Grazer. Hit you for six. Draw four cards. How does Field of the Dead limit Tefri and Historic? Because the types of decks that Tefri goes in, get pre- wait. What? Oh, wait. All right, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, where'd my other cards go yet? We're not in my main face yet. Um, Because the types of decks, sorry, sorry. I had a, I had a, I was like, what is going on? Give me my cards. Um, The types of decks that Tefri goes in tend to be bad against the card Field of the Dead. Because Tefri in Standard goes into decks that go over the top. And in Historic, Field of the Dead is the tippy top of the go over the tops. What if what if I drew six cards this turn? What if what if we drew six cards this turn? Wee! What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. 
Don't hurt me. Come on, magic! No more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good lord, Magic the Gathering! This is... This is where the magic happens, chat! This is... This is... We got huge tracts of land! <laughs> Please concede. Please... Please concede. <sighs> Alright, we could cycle into a disdainful stroke. Alright, that's lethal. God bless. God bless us, everyone. God bless us. It turns out when you're drawing seven cards in a turn, you can afford to flood a little bit. Weird. Who knew? Hell you. The fact that you get pseudo haste with mutate is just so good. God, God bless cycling cards, huh? God, God bless us, everyone. I love the mutate mechanic. It's so sweet. Just every, every different iteration of things we try with mutate has just been stellar. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to put some iteration of just guy, just guy mutate up on the website. I think. Snap, snap, Dax is a gasoline card. It's real sweet. Sounds good. Sign me up. King Caesar, my liege. Steam Vents Luris. You have my attention. You have, you have my attention. Oh, oh, I think there's a deck like this in the deck queue, actually. A Cycling Luris deck. Because this card can just be mono white, right? That's cute. Do I want to draw a card this turn, or do I want to bounce their fox? I think I want to bounce their fox, or do I want to draw a card? Let's draw a card. Yeah, we could let it we could let it build up a little bit before bouncing it. I think that's a reasonable assessment. And then like next turn I can go Tefri bounce this. And then the following turn I can after they replay it, I can mutate King Caesar. Yeah, that's a good good curve. Next turn we'll go like Tefri tap land, bounce their thing, hit them, draw another card, then the following turn. King, King Caesar with C Dasher is just so good. Huh. Would I actually rather... I think I'd rather bounce that. Or do I actually... Do I just destroy a here over the top? And like gain more life and hit them and just like hardcore race? I think, I think that's the play actually. Just like get a race on. Mutating. Mutating onto a lifelink creature is real good by BT dubs for people that haven't experienced that yet. King King Caesar gaining eight with his trigger with lifelink, also absurd. You played this to a 9-1 record so far, but found Zedra to be better than Luris, because Luris does it. Doesn't get much, and Zedra lets you play Sharknado. Ooh, Sharknado.
Is this what you're playing tomorrow, Beetle? So, we gain 16 life here. We gain 8 from this trigger and then 8 from this. So, we put them, put them to 2 and we go to 32. Don't know about you, but I'm feeling 32. Do you do do Get to draw two cards as well. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, chat. What what cards? What cards do we put on the banner for this one on my website? We want King Caesar, obviously. Who else? Who else goes on the banner? Like baby, baby G. Is it like King Caesar, octopus, baby? King, octopus, and baby. Who do I? Who do I have on my team or mutate banner? I have a team or mutate deck up there. Who's on, who's on that one? I have Baby Octopus and King King of the Cosmos on the other one. What am I doing here really quick? Scorching Dragonfire seems like an easy in. This, these, these Dream can I, I'm going to cut these Dream Trawlers after this set. Like what? Can someone... Worgy, are you here? What are what are these good against? What... what? What is this good against? Do I want Flame Sweep? I, I guess it's good against their thing that goes wide. It's fair. It doesn't kill any of our stuff, so it's a pretty low cost. Let's do, let's do Shark, King, Caesar, and Baby. Message, message my art guy now before I forget. His hand's great. Worth, worth noting here too, Flame Sweep does not hit our own creatures with flying, so it does not kill our own Hushbringer, which is lovely. I don't know, you like having... It's just like, by the time you get that far, Worgy, you've just already won the game basically every time is the issue. By the time, by the time, like, you get to that point, like, you should be winning, I feel like. If Flourishing Fox grows up here, which it's likely to, we'll probably Pouncing Shark next turn. Just get it, get it out of there. The fact that all of our lands are hurting us here is not particularly stellar for the home team. Hopefully we draw an untapped land next turn so we can King Caesar onto here and get some life back. I played four color reanimator. I have not mastermind. Bone Crusher Giant's an interesting thought. I don't hate that. I also don't hate just, like, playing Shock. I think Shock's great in the format right now. We could also just, like, play all the Tefri's main deck. I think is not unreasonable. If they have a Mystic Dispute here, we're going to be in trouble. Can't really play around it though. So we'll jump the shark here if this works. We'll send the flourishing flocks back from whence it came. No, it's not even about fear, right? You just like can't play around things you can't beat.
Mutate creates a lot of drama, which is one of the things I look for in a game. It definitely, it's a high, high tension mechanic, I feel like, is an accurate descriptor. Oh, chat, just moments before the accident. Moments, moments before the accident. Goodbye, friends. All right, hoping for, hoping for a land to stick King Caesar next turn still. So I'm assuming Luris or some other threat's going to come down here in a moment. If how many cyclers in their bin? So we need to be worried about the Zenith card. They've only got uh, they've got a lot of cyclers in the bin, chat. Everything cycles. Everything everything cycles. said Jim your opponent just mutated onto a Krenko that's not a thing that I've seen but it sounds great sounds lovely fry fry is a card to think about fry fry is a card that knowing about it could dictate how I stack my mutates we might take a smaller body in some instances to guarantee to dodge, to dodge this effect. On depth land. This gains four at least. Good lord. <laughs> Rough. That's fine. We're up a game. We're doing okay in this game despite despite not having lands, right? Like our cost our cost reducers are going going a long way to making our deck still be super playable. If they don't if they don't have a removal spell here, they're in a pretty bad spot. And like the sea dashers can trigger the pouncing shore shark to bounce their stuff next turn. So like pretty pretty good chance they're dead. If they don't have a removal spell here. I would, I would wager their deck runs significantly less lands than mine, though. And they're dead. Just a, just a time, King Caesar. Welcome to the party. So we get to say, deal four to you. Bounce you. Attack you for four with double strike. Crunch, crunch. Draw some cards, gain some life. You love to see it. extra two Tefries or a couple of shocks in my main deck probably just probably just the extra two Tefries huh there aren't any other mutate cards I want right I think I want Cub Warden this could be a card this could be a card for the sideboard though seems potentially okay Cub Warden's a non-bow with Raptor. Not if you have Hushbringer out. And like, if you have a 3-5 Lifelinker, that's still probably fine in a lot of places. It would Rodan mutate to Resurrect's Tef, but that's like exactly it. Like, I guess I should probably try a couple of him. 
Like, his body's okay, I guess. And he does, he does just trigger mutate. Like, just, just triggering mutate is fine in a lot of instances. How many red sources do I have? I have 8, 16, 17, 18. So I, I can definitely play, I can definitely play a red, red card. I mean, like, just, he's an okay body, too. So, like, you could just, like, play him, play him on three as well. I'm gonna try a pair. I feel like I should do my due diligence and try him. I feel, I feel like I should just, like, I, I feel obli- I don't, I don't, it look, he looks medium on the surface, but I also feel like I would be remiss to not play some games with him. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be the first time a card looks medium and ends up being super reasonable. I mean, I'm also not playing that many, that many Fabled Passages. Like, if you look, if you look at my mana base, we're only on two passages, right? Right? Yeah, there's only two Fabled Passages. A lot of the times we're going to have Triomes and, and Dual Lands. I feel like not having interaction before turn two... Or on turn three, it's hedging too far away from the aggro matchup in game one. As a constructed, I feel like a nice curve from aggro could just run you for sure. But I mean, like, even when you put respect in your deck top ten hammer, you're like, that's the point of playing good aggro decks is sometimes you just kill people. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what your deck looks like. Sometimes you're just going to die to aggro game one. There aren't, there aren't a ton of good one mana spells in this format. Like, I put a couple of shocks in the board and we have a couple of flame sweeps as catch-up cards, but I, I agree. Like, good, good hands out of aggro, we could just die, but that's, like, a feature of magic. This is how magic works as a game. I think I'm trading this here. I think if they offer, we're gonna trade. Yeah, yeah, Rodan's Mutate is relevant with a number of cards from our sideboard. Is definitely, definitely the case. Ha, huh, maybe I don't trade now. Now I'm going to land Tefri Bounce. Right on and then Snappy Dax next turn gets to uh gets to mutate in and do some stuff. The shocks, the shocks have definitely been painful. We're definitely, definitely feeling our mana this game. That's really good. <laughs> Check, checks aren't legal and standard, Bob. Kill your thing, gain four, crack you for ten, go. If they don't have a removal spell, they die. If they do have a removal spell, we still have Shore Shark and Octopus for next turn, and we're in an okay spot. The reason why I didn't block their Dreadhorde Butcher last turn chat when it was attacking the Tefri was one, the Tefri was dying regardless, and two, I didn't want them to draw an extra card from their Butcher dying, and I knew I was killing this the following turn, so that was fine. Alright, so they're dead, right? This Bouncing Shore Shark just destroys them. Let's 
So deal four to you, bounce you. And then we can do these two if we need to. But this has double strike, so they're just dead. Tef receives mediocre here. Uh, King of the Cosmos is kind of a go big play that we don't really need. Hushbringer's interesting. It's a little bit dangerous against Croxa, but I think it's probably worth... It's probably worth leaving in. It shuts off Midnight Reaper, and it shuts off their Dreadhorde Butcher trigger. It's been two years now, Jeff, and I think we're common law. Is that how it works? That sounds about right. Need two cuts. I think my cuts are two of my two drops. Maybe it's just the Hushbringer. It's probably just the Hushbringer. I'm not actually sure. I'm not actually sure that Scorching Dragon Fire is better than Shock in this format. Just because the decks that you want to exile things against a lot of the time, they often have ways to sacrifice their stuff. The third point of damage is relevant against Mayhem Devil deck, so I guess that's the consideration. Is this a Gust matchup? I don't think so. I don't know that I'm supposed to, I feel like in order to fit Gust in, I have to cut like all the Hushbringers. I'm not sure that that's worthwhile. Hey, we, we have one of our one of our two Mardu triumphs here, so we can actually just like cast King Caesar on four. Sounds great. Just like kill your thing, kill your thing, King Caesar. I think I'm gonna shock this to save the dragon fire for either a Midnight Reaper or a uh a Midnight Reaper or a Mayhem Devil. Hey, like a mosh. Thanks for the year and a half. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Me too. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping the mutate mechanic doesn't fall off as this as this format matures. Really, would really enjoy getting to continue to play with it. All right. Do we dragon fire this or do we just hush bring her? I think I'm just gonna hush bring her. They feel like Chandra. I'm gonna be real sad though. We missed a land drop, so I'm optimistic about getting to untap with this. Alright. Rewarded. Whoo! Whoo! The, fl the flame sweeps have been real good so far today. Getting, getting to play a deck that has an aggressive slant, but also doesn't have anything that dies to flame sweep is really great. Feels, feels really good. Just sweep, sweep these ones, sweep these ones up under the rug here. How's our ranking men's day? It's like a jump rope. It goes up, down, up, down, do, 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 do. How have the decks been today? It's been alright, set. I think this one, this one's in the running for the deck of the day easily. Perfect. You love to see it. Your opponent, please don't shadow this guy, me.
Correct. Yeah, and if you open, if you're, if you, you the melee site should auto adjust the time zone to whatever, whatever current your, your current time zone is. It's very, very, very good. Just a thass, eh? Huh? That's actually kind of tough. I think I'd rather keep the Shore Shark. How does Uro work with Hushbringer? They get to keep their Uro and it doesn't draw a card when it comes into play. It just enters as a 6-6. Six, six. Is the role of Hushbringer to actually be a good hate card or just something good? Yes. Yes is the answer to your question. It does both. Fills, fills both roles incredibly well. Mystic Dispute. Um, I'm going to decline to pay for that. Send baby here. Hit your face. We're going to make sure we play Hushbringer out next turn so that way this doesn't get any impact when it comes into play or whatever other triggers that they might have. I'm going to shock this land in because not only is my health total really high, but in the event that they sweep the board next turn, I want to be able to sack a feather at end of turn to get the Phoenix back. So it feels a little bit bad, but at the same time, like, we got to do a whole lot with those cards already, so it's like, whatever... They're thinking about if they want to blink this or not. Okay, so they're drawing a card and gaining three life and getting rid of their row. Sure. I think it's important that I put down Hushbringer this turn. Because I don't want to get Agent of Treachery, which is probably a card they're playing. Let's slow this down. Only have three cards in here, and they need six total to get a row back. Chat. We've got we've got Hushbringers for days. Stand by and watch. This might be a bad idea. 
feel like I played around that the best I could. Are we dead to Thassa? I'm at 16. How on God's green earth do you think I'm dead? I mean, I quite literally have two things in my hand that prevent the Agent of Treachery from doing things. If we could may maybe stop getting bounced, that'd be great, but... This card prevents this mutate trigger from working. Oh, magic. I don't even think we're out of this game. I just don't really feel like playing anymore. This has been such a frustrating game of magic. It's inc incredibly so. Yeah, this is only this is only game one. I don't even know that we're behind at the moment. I'm not quite sure who's up and who's down. Thanks for the nine months, Halophile. Welcome back. No, it says cast it, right? You may cast target non-creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. Yeah, that's what that's what the that's what the card says. You may cast. Defrey, Defrey does not stop this card. Does not, does not stop this card, no. They have Thassa that just blinks whatever I put stuff on. I don't, I don't have anything useful to get with King of the Cosmos here. Yeah, that was a pretty frustrating game. I just like, had two Shatters and three Tefries in the top. You know, 15 cards, their 80 card deck. I don't know. I don't know that I'm convinced that I don't think we had King of the Cosmos in the last build of this deck. And I, I kind of feel like it's not good. Kind of. I kind of feel like it's just so clunky. And not, not only is it kind of clunky in this deck, but it explicitly, um, we don't have really great things to high roll into in this deck. Like we don't have big giant haste monsters or stuff like that. You cannot mutate. Wait. Wait, you can mutate onto creatures. Wait, is what is the wording of mutate? Oh god. Is it just you own?
I thought I thought it's control and own. I think it's control and own. Sorry, non-human creature you own. Put it over or under target non-human creature. It's definitely just you own. All right, that's funny. All right, next time if we're losing a, if we're losing the second game for science purposes, we'll do that if that's a, if that's an option we have available to us. If, if that option is available and it looks like we're gonna die anyways, we can try it. I think I think they get to choose what the mutate triggers do. I think makes the most sense. I think I just load this up and start drawing cards. I would I would assume it's their card mutating, so they choose. So they choose. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should put the octopus on top so we don't get Aether Gusted. Maybe I should put the octopus on top to dodge Aether Gust. Although putting the octopus on top means that... Putting the octopus on top means that we do get um, Elspeth Conqueror's death because the octopus is a three. God bless America. Yeah, I should have played around that. I deserve that. I could have just shocked in the land and held up the held up the stroke. I wasn't thinking about the sweeper. Yeah, fuck this game. <sighs> Let's play one more. Let's play one more. I deserve to lose that. First game was really frustrating with a lot of decisions. I should have with the with the C Dasher Octopus on on my two drop. I definitely should have. I definitely should have just held up the stroke there. Against their Shadow of the Sky deck that's almost assuredly playing for. I mean, they weren't really playing Blue Light Control. They were playing like a Yorian version of the Bant deck that was good from last season. Which makes a lot of sense for that direction to take it in. Uh, Walker, um, just drop from the event. Don't, don't try and give away or sell your spot or whatever it is you're trying to do. If you're not, if you're not going to play, just, just drop, please. Someone, someone else will fill in. There's people that are checking it, post to the Discord server, or someone will fill the slot. Yeah, and that's and that's gonna happen more and more. More people just playing the good decks from last season is the natural, natural like cyclicalness of the format. You should expect to see more and more of that as the format matures more. There'll be there will be more of people just playing the good decks from last season as we go on, not less. And that, and that's like when people say, well, how's the format? You'll often hear me say, well, I don't know. And that, that's the answer. That's the reasonable answer. We don't know what this format developed really looks like. It could be great. It could be a crapshoot. I don't, you, you don't know. All right. White, white or red source. Untapped white or red source. Untapped white or red source. I guess I could still hit it, right? Because this... This draws two discards too. We need an untapped white or red source to mutate Snapdax here. Sweet. All right, so we'll bend this. I'm gonna put this under so it dodges. Uh, dodges what's it called? Dodges Bone Crusher, and then I'm gonna put this on this baby Godzilla. And then we'll mutate him over 
We'll shoot their Fey of Wishes. We'll hit them for one draw a card. We'll kill Tefri. If we get shattered next turn, we're a bit behind. But if we don't get shattered, we're like really far ahead. Survey says, just a Narset deal. It was a lot of game actions for four mana. Yep. Okay. And then like again here. So they, they did that. Sure. But now I get to go. Ha. Huh. Right, I'm going to do this. We mutate onto here. We get to loot. Um, I'm going to ditch Hushbringer I think. I want the mana. So we go over. This shoots Narset. We attack them. We hit them for six. We draw two cards. Again, just like when these decks get humming along, they are so good. Just all, all the pieces really come together. Am I cycling this triome? I feel like the answer is no. I think I want the option to play two, three mana things next turn. Yeah, but there's no, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get to mutate this other one. So I think looting the other one, looting the other one aggressively is a little premature. I know my responsibility. Let's try this. All right, so looting with baby G Zilla is not optional but i think i need to play him and snap dax to take the narset off a of play so they don't get another impulse so i do just have to discard a card here which feels bad but i think it's the correct play so we get to we get to mutate onto here say over Eliup. we get to go ahead and kill narset so again baby baby g well, you can't see the card text because Magic Arena has randomly chosen you to not show. Second verse. All right, look at that. Uh, when you cast a creature spell, if it is mutate, draw, then discard. This might be a bad idea. Keep doing it until they're foil, something like that. Don't find a sweeper. Don't find a sweeper. Don't find a sweeper. Big bucks, no shatter. Big bucks, no shatter. Big bucks, no shatter. Rats. Well, I mean, I guess we didn't get shattered. Glass half full. Huh. All right. So we get to go... We get to go Destroya into Mutate C Dash or Octopus onto it. Get a get a feather. And we looted a Destroya into the bin earlier. They have, a lot of, they have a lot of card selection here, though. They've got the castle they can technically activate twice. They got a draw step and they have an arson activation. Kind of kind of regretting playing the third triome instead of saving it to cycle. Also, honestly, kind of regret looting the destroyer instead of discarding a land. Probably could have been a little bit more... A little bit more aggressive with some of those. Had a little bit more action. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mute while I rolled it up. Sorry. Usually I do. Destroy is not legendary. It's just called Everquill Phoenix without the skin. I 
There's a couple of slots open for the tournament tomorrow. A few people had conflicts come up. If you're interested in playing, head on over to the Melee page and snag one of those up. <sighs> I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. <laughs> All right. All right. A Springer doesn't do much. Disdainful stroke sounds fine, I guess. Tefri's okay. This is gonna be this is gonna be the last match with the stack before we roll on into the next one. I'm supposed to mulligan a hand with no plays like that. This seems fine, I guess. Dragonfire takes her in our set. Is that a consideration? I don't really think so. Like, we don't work. We don't really want to be. We want to be the beatdown. Like, we don't want to be reacting and responding to their stuff for the most part. Three, three, first strike. I choose you. And by choose you, I mean I will be shortly putting you back into my hand because of a Teferi. I mean, why do you think the lands are the things that are defining the format? Requiem would be my question to you. What do you, what part of this specifically do you think is the format defining part? Maybe I'm supposed to lead on Destroya, actually. Yeah, I'd probably rather lead on one of these because if this dies, I have another one. Yeah, leading on Caesar, there's probably a mistake. What's going on? Brace Tactic? Yeah, we're going to play one more after this two even. So this is going to be our last match with this deck. We're going to hit an ad roll for a quick break while I flip over, and then we're going to come back with some five-color Niv to close things out. Is anyone a shillionaire yet? Negative, wife. There are, uh, Beansy, I believe, is in the lead with, uh, with approximately 600,000 shillings. They're gonna bounce whatever we play anyways, very likely. I believe, I believe 600k is the, uh... Yeah, about, about another three. Uh, I think Beansy at 600k is probably on track to get another like three to four months. We should see them see them pick it up. Well, all right, mutate this over the top. Shoot the Fey. Attack the Narset. I 
think it's right to kill the Narset rather than deal eight to them there. Letting them impulse again with her feels pretty bad. I think these cards, these are great designs. Um, so as someone who's built a lot of mana bases in these formats, I, I felt like building three color mana bases was really difficult and having having access to these has felt like it's really fixed the issue that I had consistently making three color mana bases. Feels like feels like three color mana bases are pretty pretty viable if you're in one of these one of these shards. Or or super dead. Yeah, I don't know. This deck this deck feels good against aggressive decks, but the kind of go big decks from last season, like these Elspeth Conquers Death decks, these Tefri decks, we lost to Bant, we lost to Fires, and it really that really feels like the it feels like the gatekeeping metric that we felt last season, kind of starting to rear its head back in standard again as people have like explored the new things like. The and again, this is historic and standard are pretty close in a lot of ways, but that's one way they really differ because there's no field of the dead, there's no greed check in this format. The just the the Tefri, Elspeth Conquers Death, Hydrate Crisis, Nissa Fires like these decks that go big with those spells, there's nothing to pound them down at the top, and it feels like it strangles anything that's not hyper aggressive to really get under them out of the format like this deck's pretty close to mid-rangey i think and it really just didn't in those matches where other people were going big as well it felt like what we were trying to put together wasn't really competitive enough you actually can't just give out shillings wife you can't all right what are we doing we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up. We'll see. Interesting to see. So this is uh, this is one we played once before, and it felt pretty reasonable. But interesting to see if we're able to keep up with these fire decks and other things that are going on in the format. I'm gonna go ahead and hit a quick ad roll here while I get my client restarted, get everything flipped over. When we get back, we'll be playing some uh, five color uh, Jagatha Jagatha Niv visit. Back in a few, folks.